What's up, guys, gals, and non-binary pals? Welcome to the Animation Talk Show for the week of 1-24-2021. I remember to say 2021 this time around. <laughs> and we are here today because it's time to talk about animation. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Donut. How are you guys doing today? It's time to talk about stuff and shows and cartoons and animation and all that good stuff, all the fun stuff. Um... It has been a bit slow going here at the beginning of the year. Nothing too crazy to kick everything off. Nothing too wild to get started. But a couple things that I am kind of noticing kind of surrounding animation. Uh, seems to be one, this like renewed vigor to like teach people things. Uh, I've seen a lot of like tutorials and breakdowns and all this crazy stuff coming out. Uh, just to how to be better at art in general. I'll be getting into some of that later. Um, and I've also seen a lot of, I mean, it's weird on the flip side, I've seen a lot of like really weird drama happening. And I guess drama might not be the right word. Um, maybe more like problematic stuff, kind of, sort of, <laughs> like some things that um, you think would be common sense to not do. Uh, but unfortunately they're not and we'll get into that as well at some point but first and foremost let me get the business out of the way follow me on all my social media twitter instagram uh you can find me at cody hansel live or cody hansel on everything twitch youtube all that good stuff uh youtube has a vanity now youtube.com slash cody under uh cody hansel no underscore on that one um and I started drawing recently, so I've been getting back into art. I've got way, way far to go. Um, and maybe I'll talk about art a little bit more on my YouTube channel if you subscribe to it, just saying. Uh, that might be a video coming out later this week. Who knows? I don't know. I don't make my own videos. All right, wait, I do. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, also, I want to mention... A quick little story. A friend of mine who I work with, uh, I was tra actually, actually, I actually started out training him, and then we kind of became friends through that. But we, we were kind of talking about stuff. I told him about like the animation talk show and everything that I was doing, uh, and then he said, "You know what's crazy? I'm writing a children's book." <laughs> And I was like, no way. He's like, yeah, I'm writing a children's book. It's about like bagpipes and like animals and Scottish ancestry and all that stuff. Like, oh, that's cool. So when does it come out? He says, uh, I don't know at the time, but it has officially come out. And he gave me a copy of it. And it's it's a children's book. You know, I'm probably not going to hold on to it. I'm going to end up giving it to uh, probably going to donate to the preschool I used to go to, actually, because I think that'd be fun. But it's got I have a piper who lives on a farm. Uh, the art on the inside is really cute. I'll get the illustrator's name in a second, but she did this all on watercolor and then took photos of it. Let's see. The book is written by my buddy Darren Smith and it is illustrated by Kathy Ann Erdman. These two right here. I just think that's really cool and really neat. I told him I'd shout it out for him. It is really interesting though and it's kind of cool. Um, 12 point 121k wow cody points i'll make it to a million one day i mean yeah one day <laughs> i've learned more from the last year uh from people wanting to do tutorials than i have in the previous five years or something that's kind of how i feel today <laughs> honestly <laughs> I, I the past couple the past like three or four weeks has been me like really doubling down on like paying attention to tutorials, following people online and everything, kind of digging deep into that stuff. And I've gotten a lot of stuff from that. And I'm going to have a lot of resources here in the show notes that are going to be in the description of every one of these, um, whether you're listening to it on the pod or you're watching it on YouTube. Um, show notes will always be in the description of the episode that they're in. So you'll be able to get these links as soon as I drop them. But now that we got all the uh, intro stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into the news. Uh, the weekly news. Wow, look at that slide. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I found this just the other day. This is actually from two days ago. And this is happening today. This is happening today. So if you're seeing this 
I mean, it's going to be too late if you watch it on the Vine, but if you're seeing this on Twitch, this is happening today. Um, from 5 to 7 p.m. PST, that's California time. So if you're on the East Coast, let's see. Yeah, let's see, that's 5 for them, which would be 7 for me. So 8 for you. 8 p.m. all the way on the East Coast, 5 p.m. all the way on the West Coast. So there you go. Um, what this is, is she's going to be going live to talk resumes for animation production. So if anybody's interested in getting some pointers from a professional in the industry, I believe she works at Nickelodeon. Um, all the information for that's in this tweet right here. Uh, it's also, she's going to be on Instagram, uh, 1 AM or 3 AM. If you're in the UK, like me, Jesus, Bert. I mean, I guess we did learn that yesterday, but I kind of forgot. <laughs> I was kind of in a daze yesterday. My brain was just like, just out of it completely, totally. I was an autopilot so hard for so long yesterday. <laughs> uh, but I thought this was interesting and I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to shout it out. It's a lot of cool stuff for people. I never sleep normally anyway. I mean, me, me neither, dude. <laughs> I mean, I went to bed at five probably didn't fall asleep until six and woke up at 12 so I could get ready to work on the show. So yeah, believe me, I don't sleep either. <laughs> Whew. Anyways, now this has been done. Uh, she also founded uh, uh, Latinx in animation, which you should definitely follow just because they post some cool stuff. I mean, that's how I found this. Um, but there's so much cool resources here, especially if you are, person of color also black and animated of course follow them all that information just well it'll help you find a way to break into the industry in an industry that track record and such kind of i mean white supremacy what can i say i'm trying to help stop it i can't there's always so much i can do but i can do a lot more people think uh <laughs> um anyways going on to disney um, a like classic animator, a classic Disney animator passed away recently, Dale Bear. Uh, and Disney, of course, uh, released a statement. We are saddened by the passing of animator Dale Bear. He was the supervising animator of beloved characters, including Yzma from the Emperor's New Groove and Owl from Winnie the Pooh. Bear's first role at Disney was a trainee on Robin Hood, and over the course of his career, he animated on films such as The Lion King, Treasure Planet, Home on the Range, Meet the Robinsons, and The Princess and the Frog. His work can also be seen in shorts like How to Hook Up Your Home Theater, Get a Horse, and Feast. Having directly worked with six of Disney's legendary nine old men, Walt Disney's trusted and pioneering team of animation giants, he carried on their legacy in his own work, and through the many aspiring animators he so generously mentored at the studio, and through his classes at Cal Arts and other institutions, he was a great friend and will be deeply missed. Uh, and he went from 1950 to 2021. So, lost another great one there. Lost another great one there. But, you know, 71 years, that's a good run. And, I mean, he's done some great work. I mean, again, literally, the like the week we found out about this was the week me and my friends, like, rewatched The Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> We're like, wow, that's a weird coinky dink. Huh. Can people stop dying? Unfortunately, it's one of the things that kind of come with living, apparently. <laughs> Apparently that just happens, bud. You sign the life contract, you're automatically <laughs> you automatically opt in for the death one, I guess. Don't really get much of a choice on that. But moving on to more positive news. I signed no contracts. What can I tell you, buddy? <laughs> moving on to more positive news. Uh Invincible, uh, which is by Robert Kirkman. Uh, the creator of uh, the creator of The Walking Dead, um, and this was also a comic for him, Invincible. Uh, his series is coming to Amazon, and we have release dates for it. I believe I mentioned this uh, a couple of months ago during one of the earlier talk shows, whenever it first got announced. Um, I am on the fence about this. At times, it looks like it could be as good as Young Justice, but I also haven't read the comic, uh, so I don't know very much about it i did read like a quick synopsis about it and he's the son of 
another superhero who's an alien from another planet. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I got for you, really. Um, but, you know, that's that's all I got for you. But this is the airing list uh, on March 26th. We get the first three episodes. So a little bit of a bench fest there at the beginning. Uh, and then episodes four, five, six, seven, and eight will be coming out weekly after that, which feels like a good release schedule. Uh, Amazon's been doing this recently. They also last did it with the boys. Uh, this will be on Amazon, by the way, um, where they release like a couple of episodes at the very beginning. And then throughout the weeks, they do like a weekly update. And I kind of like that. It means you get the binge a little bit at the beginning, but then you get that anticipation of a week to week showing. Um, I will be following this. I will be watching this. I've already added this to my own calendar. Uh, so I'll be able to check out the episodes as they come out. And I don't know if it's interesting enough. I might talk about it. I don't know. Robert Kirkman has a way of putting a spin on things that are extremely popular. Like how he put a spin on zombies 15 years ago with the walking dead or something like that. And now he did a spin on superheroes and I hope it's good. I will say I like I invincible's costume design. Like the the yellow, blue, black. It goes like his hair and everything. It's a really cool design, really cool costume. I like it a lot. Uh, I just hope that it looks good. <laughs> like it actually animates smoothly and cleanly and looks nice. I can only hope. They're definitely taking some points from DC though. Like the DC animated stuff. They're definitely taking points from that. Coming up next, uh, Demon Slayers on Netflix. I just recently watched a Demon Slayer for the first time. Like I finished, I finished the season, like I think a week ago, I finished season one. Uh, and in the same week that I finished season one, they announced that the movie is coming to America with an English, an official English sub and dub sometime in the first, sometime in early 2021. My prediction is March, but who knows, really? It's sometime this year. We know that. <laughs> sometime, it's got to be before July. It's got to be before the six-month period. That's how early works. If it's, not, if it's after that, it's late 2021. That's how just time works. So, I do recommend watching this, though. It's really, really good. Uh, the animation is, dude, I mean, if you're not seeing it here in this GIF, I mean, the main reason to watch the show is the art style. The art style is fan fantastic. Oh my God, it's so good. But it also does manage to like follow while also getting around and making less annoying a bunch of anime tropes. So that's really nice. That being said, I'm still not a fan of Zenitsu. <laughs> I know his arc. I already know what he's going to be. I'm just not a fan of him right now. That being said, I haven't read the manga, so don't spoil anything for me by telling me what happens in the manga. I want to watch. I want to go on the adventure. <laughs> don't spoil. Next up, we got our first look at Space Jam, A New Legacy. Um, this is, of course, the LeBron James Space Jam sequel, uh, where... Uh, a lot of people, basically what they pointed out in this one little shot was like, oh God, that's so loud. I'm so sorry. Um, I was just trying to pause. Uh, what they pointed out in this one little shot is first and foremost, Aaron, that's because he is CGI here. Uh, the sh movie looks like it's going to be using a mix of CGI and 2D. Uh, people, now there's no confirmation on this yet, of course, because you haven't seen it and there hasn't been a full trailer. But speculation is whenever they're in like the tune version of the world uh it'll be 2d like classic animation uh whenever they're in the more realistic version of the world though with lebron they're going to be using cg models and everything um at least that's what's being speculated that's what it seems to be he looks very cg here um like I don't think there's any way that this is 2D. Like, even the motion blur looks kind of like CG motion blur. Um, let's see. You can't see it in this shot, but people were, like, breaking it down and, like, oh, look who's here, look who's there. Um, I think at one point somebody pointed out, like, the Warner Brothers tower was off the one shot. Uh, there was also... I think Harvey Birdman was in a shot. Like, they were... <laughs> They're like, look at all this. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. 
I just thought it was interesting. Uh, this, of course, will be on HBO Max whenever it eventually comes out at some point. And then the next thing is HBO Max announced a bunch of animated films that are coming out sometime this year. <laughs> There's like no actual release date on any of them, and they're all got very short little stint bits of information to them. So I'm not going to worry about it, like deep diving into them that much. We're just going to go down, pop, 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 pop. And as more information comes out for them, we'll talk about them more in future, uh, future talk shows. Uh, first and foremost, a Winter's Tale from Sean the Sheep. Uh, Sean the Sheep is normally like shorts. I don't think this is going to be a full-length movie, although Sean the Sheep has had, I think, one or two full-length movies. Um, this is definitely going to be like a winter movie. I don't think there's any... Like, there's no way this isn't coming out in November, December. But, you know, still... I think it's going to be probably more of like a 45 minute thing, but it could be a full film. Who knows? Uh, Wish Dragon. This looks so good. I believe this is another movie that Netflix bought from Sony, I want to say, and picked up and continued production on it. I've been kind of following this uh, and people working on it over the past couple of years. I'm just very excited to see that they're out. Uh, Fooling on. Yeah, I love the style of Wish Dragon. It looks really cute. It looks really nice. It's very like, like this guy's weirdly angular here, but then he's all shapely here. I don't know. I, I do love like the style though, the rendering, everything. It looks really, really cute. Um, then a working class college student with big dreams but small means and a long but cynical, all powerful dragon capable of granting wishes set off on a hilarious adventure through modern day Shanghai in pursuit of Din's long lost childhood friend, Lena. It's cute. It looks cute. I hope it's going to be cute. Speaking of other stuff, weird transition, uh, the Loud House movie. Uh, the Loud House has been like Nickelodeon's kind of like big show for a while now uh, in the sense that it just keeps getting people to watch it. It like people are always watching the Loud House. It's always got new episodes coming out. It's been production for seasons. It's got a spinoff in the Casa Grandes, uh, which, by the way, if you haven't seen the Casa Grandes, my friend Nick Paris works on it. Um, so there you go. He, uh, he always says it's like, it's like loud house, but it's wackier and kookier. They have like, they have like more fun with it. So I don't know if you don't like the loud house, maybe give that show a try. Cause apparently it's a little bit more silly. Whereas the loud house might be a little bit more restrained. Uh, but apparently they're descendants of Scottish royalty. Uh, I don't know what the style of the movie is going to be. Like, I don't think the whole movie is going to be animated in this style. I feel like they just rendered this out to, like, make a cool little poster and everything. Which I do like a lot of the costume design in this. A lot of it's really cute. It's a lot of really fun stuff. Um, but I also don't think it's going to look like this the entire movie. That would be kind of a big thing for Nickelodeon. I imagine they, they're they probably going to spruce up the style of the show a little bit. Um, but we don't really know. We haven't seen anything from it. Again, it's just announced date or announced mint. No trailer or anything yet. Whoops. We got Robin Robin. Um, when her egg rolls into a dump, Robin is raised by a family of mice. As she grows up, her differences become more apparent. Robin sets off on a heist to prove that her family, she can really be a good mouse, but ends up discovering who she really is. This just sounds like fun. You know, it's basically um, the ugly duckling but it's about a bird who's going to be like a mouse thief. <laughs> I don't know. This just seems cute. I'm going to watch this just because it seems really cute. It just seems like a good fun time. Back to the Outback. Just, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. It looks like kind of a, scaled down version of oh what's madagascar that's it i had it, then i lost it then i had it again it looks kind of like a scaled down madagascar that being said i do think some of the character designs are cute like i like this big purple spider guy and this little i can't tell if it's a scorpion or a lizard i'm gonna say lizard well that's a lizard so it's probably a scorpion the snake is also cute i think i really just don't like this guy i think this design right here i just don't like this character i don't know i feel like everything's too large up top 
like the ears and the head they're all way too big for this teeny tiny body like disproportionately so something about the way his face i don't i don't know i kind of want to punch him <laughs> i want to punch the little koala guy <laughs> they're not an endangered species are they <laughs> i'm not gonna get canceled for wanting to punch his little koala it looks like Sahara, the animated film of snakes. I have to look into that. I haven't seen. I know what Sahara looks like. I feel like Sahara animated film. Uh... Oh, I haven't seen this. Huh. I'll have to look into that, I think. Maybe we'll see. You'll be canceled for this in five years. <laughs> no jokes allowed. No. It's it's not even a real koala. It's a cartoon character. <laughs> Let me punch it. Let's see. So yeah, they announced all of those. Um, Arlo the Alligator Boy, we have talked about this like four times on the talk show. I'm not going to talk about it again. Uh, except that I absolutely cannot wait for it. I cannot wait for it. Dude, Arlo's going to be so sick. No, we're moving on. We're moving on. We're moving on. Maya and the Three. Set in a mythical Mesoamerican-inspired world, a warrior princess embarks on the quest to recruit three legendary fighters to help save the world of men and gods. That just sounds cool. Honestly, like, we're going to get this movie and Raya in the same year. And obviously, Raya's, I believe, more Chinese-inspired, I want to say. Um, and this is Mesoamerican, so two very different sides of, you know, two di totally different hemispheres. Uh, but just the other day, we're getting, like, you know, female lead who's, like, a, like, dope warrior or dope fighter, maybe. I don't know, going out on an adventure to, like, save the world. That just, I'm just glad that the archetype is becoming more popular. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be so good. Uh, I'm so mad we didn't get pictures for these two movies, but Rise of the TMNT, the movie, um, as you all probably know, uh, Rise of the TMNT got horribly canceled, um, uh, and canned and put in the, put in the backseat, but they were working on a movie before all that happened. So they finished up the movie. Um, so many members of the Rise team have announced like in the past week or two on Twitter that they have like just wrapped up their last week of production on the movie, which means all the pre-production for the movie and all the early production is done. And now they're just kind of into the raw animation and work heading in the post work, it seems like. So the movie will probably be be out sometime in the summer if i had to guess maybe fall i hope summer but maybe more like fall we'll have to see it depends on how long the uh like the raw animation takes rides with great nick treated it poorly yeah yeah a friend wrapped up her storyboards for this film yeah i'm hoping i mean it's gonna be coming out sometime this year they announced that i'm hoping it's gonna be sometime in march uh, or not March, sometime in the summer. I imagine they'll probably aim for like a summer release since that's when the most kids will be home to watch the movie the most times. Um, if not, uh, it'll probably be kind of like early fall. Um, that being said, this announcement does uh, specify that the Krang will be in here, which also probably confirms that the skeleton we saw in the last episode, whenever... Shredder busted open the statue thing that had the stuff goo in it for the magical aura transformation. I forget the details. Gurren Lagann, um was probably a was probably one of the crack. Uh, DreamWorks Troll Hunters Rise of the Titans. If you haven't seen Troll Hunters, go watch it. It's not the prettiest show on the planet. I understand that, but I do really like the storytelling. The show takes its time, and the pacing can feel a little bit slow because of that, but I do really, really like the show. Uh, Troll Hunters is very good, especially if you watch the series front to back. Uh, Three Below is pretty good. It's not great, but it's pretty good. Um, like My thing with Three Below is like 
I don't so much love the actual story, but I do like the message they're getting across about a displaced family. Uh, that like you know, it's like you know, it's it's a displaced family like they're displaced from their country, uh, and they're kind of finding, you know, sanctuary in America. That's the that's essentially the the metaphor they're rolling with here. Uh, it's very very good. Um, it's not as good as the other two shows in the like the three series story that is this whole thing, but it's pretty good. Um, and Wizards, Wizards is the shortest, but it might be my favorite. But also, daddy issues. <laughs> am I biased? Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> very, very much so. Uh, but I did like Wizards, and I like Dukesy as a character. Like as a lead, Dukesy's got the most charm, in my opinion. And that, oh, excuse me. And that's finally all of the announcements from this long list of movies that we have varying amounts of detail on. <laughs> some almost none, some a decent bit. All right, yeah, yep, that's it. All right, moving on, we're going over to, whoops, where's my thing? There it is, Bop. Bop. We're going on over to the short report. Also, uh, Vert, if you know your friend's social media, can you, like, post it? Uh, just in case she ever posts up her, like, uh, storyboards on it, because I would love to see them. And a lot of artists do that. Uh, going on into short report, uh, we got Wonder Why, French series directed by Anaïs Cheviard. Uh, I totally destroyed that enunciation for sure. Um... This is very much going to be a children's show, but they also released like a little bit of information for like the mini groundwork. They go through a little bit of like production stuff. Hold on, let me just turn that down. There we go. But they go through some production stuff, some work in progress stuff. The style is so ridiculously cute. I love it. It is very adorable, very cute, very nice stuff. Uh, and they also, if you go over to their website, they have like a whole little pilot where you can watch like a two minute little bit. I can't understand it because it's French uh, and there is no translation for it. But the animation's pretty. The style's cute. I like all that a lot. So, I do I mean, obviously it's like, like not my target show because it is, you know, six plus, but it's very cute and I like the art style. So wanted to shout that out let's see oh here we go you know india swift for you know india you know little swifty oh my god i've been watching their dude i try to watch their like uh anim uh animornic oh not in person you, you threw me for a loop there buddy <laughs> But you've like talked online and chit chat and stuff like that. Uh, who donut? Uh, Old Swifty, aka uh, India Swift, um, right here. She has worked on a number of projects. Also, if you haven't seen this, the Rise Up Danger. Um, here, I'll drop this link in here. You're in her Discord. I needed to join their Discord honestly, so I can keep up with the Anna Morning stuff. Um. This is a professional animator, works on a bunch of different shows, also follows a bird brain. There's so many people to follow. So many, there's so many talented artists. There are too many, too many, too many good people to freak out about. Um, but her and um, Doig, Doig ben, uh, Benjamin Doig, Doig Swift, uh, the two of them have, um, the two of them do a stream together on twitch.tv slash Doig Swift called uh, Anna Mornings, where... They just sit around in the morning and drink coffee. And on one stream, you see them both like working together, streaming together, uh, doing various projects. It's a lot of fun. Michael Doig. Oh, you're right. I had a friend at work named Ben Doig. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, you're right. Michael Doig, not Benjamin Doig. Doig seems like such a weirdly uncommon last name, but I know two Doigs now. Weird. But yeah, go check them out. Go watch their content. Very cool stuff. Do it. Do as I say. Do it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it. Watch the Twitch. 
do it. I've never heard that name before. I didn't, I thought Benjamin Doig was an uncommon name, but like, then I saw Michael Doig, I'm like, there's no way this is the same guy. No, it wasn't. It's like, wow. Well, yeah. Anyways, um, if you guys haven't seen Joel Haver, uh, his YouTube videos are hilarious, right? Uh, like they do these weekly shorts that are all different varieties of like hilarious and funny and covering different little topics and stuff like that. And apparently they apparently they've done feature length film stuff. I haven't seen these. I might have to watch these. Hopefully they're good. Um, but they do a new short every week. And recently I found them because of these, like playing an RPG for a second time, uh, telling missions from NPCs perspective, where it's like this like animated kind of style. Um, and I'll mute this and just play it for you to get, give you an idea of what it is. But it's like this very like semi animated. I mean, it is animated, but it's, this style and like me and my friends are trying to figure out like how do they like how does he do this and how does he produce this so quickly it's got to be some kind of filter and almost right almost right uh again links to this will be uh in the links to this will be in the show notes i'll go ahead and post a link in the chat for everybody who might want to go just check it out and keep it in a tab for later um their videos are very very funny and just in general, like, this is a cool little program and workflow he's figured out for this. So feel free to check it out. Let's see. That's just Joel Haver's channel. Here we go. Here's the other thing from the short report. We got a new Varg skeleton animation uh, by Zurel, Joel, the Knight of the Nun. Um, like, all of these, like, like everything he's done, like, the animation is phenomenal. Oh, this is the Wasp. This is the last one. Here we go. Like the animation's phenomenal. The style's great. The comedy is hilarious. It's super duper good. Um, it's great. It's great. He talks about how Whoopi Goldberg doesn't have eyebrows. It's pretty great. It's pretty good. I liked it a lot. Uh, also, the uh, music video that I've been like talking about and I even did a bit of fan art on, um, Darken by uh, Zudamayo and Hanabushi dropped. Um, God, it's so good. Look at this. Look at how cute this is. Ah, it's adorable. <laughs> it's so cute. I love it. It's so cute. Uh, obviously, you can go watch this on their YouTube channel, but you need a VPN. Uh, this is on Billy Billy. Uh, so you don't need a VPN to watch this. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about all that. It's just already there. Um, and it's really cute. It's really adorable. It gets kind of sad. It's no study me, which is their other, like, which is the one that kind of like got them on the map for a lot of people, at least a lot of Americans, I think. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people that aren't Japanese, um, but it's really, really good. And I like it a lot. Also the pilot for long gone Gulch dropped finally after years of following this project of following Tara and Zach and just keeping an eye out for every little bit of work they do. Finally, long gone Gulch has dropped and it's good. I liked it. It was funny. It was fun. It was interesting. Um, I have a few problems with it, mostly in kind of like timing and pacing. Some things, like some jokes feel a little weird. Some bits feel a little funny. But I mean, this animation, dude, you can't, you can't shake how good this animation is. I love the character designs. I love the art style, the bold outlines, just how much form and shape the characters still have in Shot the Shot. Like, I love it. It's super good. It's very, very good animation. And there is no way the show would get picked up and look like this because it would cost way too much to make these days unless like Netflix picked it up. Also, there she is. Rawhide, the girl. Very good. <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, I don't know if you guys follow Telepert 
on uh on Twitter. Let me find one that's not like weirdly perverse sometimes. Uh, <laughs> uh if you well if you guys don't follow Telepert, uh this past year no mute. This past year, um somebody made him a bet that he needs to make an animation a day every day for a year. And he accepted the bet and he did it. 366 days of Telepertal or tell of Telepert. Uh, you can, of course, go follow Telepertal on Twitter. That's his account. That's where he posts all of his animations. You can follow it from, you can follow it and see where he does it. He probably isn't animating every day anymore uh, <laughs> because he doesn't have to, but he has been posting more like artwork and studies. Um, so, Feel free to follow him there. He only uploads to Twitter. So there's that. Uh, but an hour and nine minutes of animation by himself. 366 individual little animated segments in a year. It's wild to like put that number in my head and try and like just understand it. It's super, super cool. Uh, definitely check it out. Come watch this. Uh, some of the stuff was like tutorials as well. There's a few tutorials mixed in the bit. Um, but a lot of them are just a lot of fun. Um, he does get a, like, he does get a little, like, kind of like goofy raunchy in there at some point. Um, I give up day one. Same. Um, like there are a few, like, not, none of his work is not safe for work, but it does kind of like. There are some jokes that are like, oh, this is obviously kind of like a little bit, a little bit raunchy, a little bit goofy, but it's never like full on not safe for work. It's mostly just kind of like goofy, like goofy kind of like nudity here and there. It never like full front or anything, just like suggestive nudity, I guess, if that's a thing. I don't know. It never shows, it never shows nipple. <laughs> that's the best way I can put it. <laughs> So there you go. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a whole hour of just like fun little goofs and jokes. And a lot of them are pretty funny. A lot of them are pretty good. What's this? Oh, yeah. Goblin week. So starting today, starting today is goblin week. Oh, hold on. We're at Cody's corner. Boop. Boop. Uh, starting this week, the ninth annual Goblin Week starts. Um, Goblin Week. It is the ninth annual one of these. Sunday, January 24th through Saturday, January 30th. Make goblins every day or as much as you like. However you like. Tag them. Hashtag Goblin Week. What is a goblin? There are no rules. Follow your heart. It's Goblin Week. Hashtag Goblin Week. I just love how chill this challenge is and I kind of want to do it. I'm... I'm very much probably just gonna do a stream where I just draw a goblin. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna do a goblin sometime on Goblin Week. But I wanted to shout it out. I want everybody to know about Goblin Pog. <laughs> Gobbo Pog. <laughs> I just wanted to shout it out because it just seems like a lot of fun. It seems cool. Um, it's something that I want to participate in. And that's not the only challenge this year for any board artists out there. We've got uh oh, I accidentally closed the original tweet. <laughs> Hold on, I can find it real quick. Uh, because this goes through a whole process. Uh, let's see, I need to go to... Uh, it's Abigail. Yep, here we go. Bat. Right here we go. I found it. Feb Board Airy. The board airy hard hard challenge to <laughs> announce a month long challenge to practice storyboarding and to connect with other story artists. There are five ways to participate, so don't sweat it if you can only do one a day. I'm excited to see what everyone makes. So she goes through the process of how to participate. You know what to tag things as, and the 28 prompts for like practicing storyboarding and connecting with other story artists. Uh, and this is all by Abigail Lee. Um, who like kind of founded this like storyboarding club, if I remember correctly. Um, there's no information about it in her 
bio, but I believe I've seen posts about it here and there. Um, but I found Abigail uh, through her podcast that she does with another one of her, with one of her friends, uh, Ariel. Yes, I don't know Ariel's last name, but Ariel at Yelly Draws. Uh, both of them have a really cute art style, by the way. Really adorable stuff. Good art. And they're like very much like kind of pushing a community thing. So go follow both of them. But their podcast, Hey Hire Us, is a weekly podcast talking about getting hired in the animation industry. They're, you know, they're fresh out of they're fresh out of college. They, you know, they haven't been out for very long. They've got friends who are also out of college but don't have jobs in the animation animation industry uh if they have there's various amounts of work in there they did recently have somebody on uh who had had jobs in the animation industry and she kind of came on uh and talked about that aspect of it you know how to get hired work you know things to put in your resumes and how to improve uh and on top of that Abigail and Ariel are just two really, really fun people to listen to. You can tell they're having a lot of fun on the podcast. Um, and they definitely know what they're talking about. Um, if you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. I highly recommend it. Uh, new episodes on Mondays. So tomorrow, new episode. Um, but I've, I've listened to every episode so far and I plan on keeping listening. Uh, they've had a bunch of artists on there. So basically every week, if you haven't heard of the artist, you get a new artist to go follow on Twitter. So <laughs> I'm like a Pokemon trainer for artists on Twitter. Got to follow them all. <laughs> Except the problematic ones. Not doing that. Not doing that. But yeah, really interesting stuff. Go check them out. I wanted, Because I was shouting out the board challenge, I also wanted to shout out their podcast because I do find their podcast very useful. It's a lot of cool information. It's really fun. Uh, next up, this video by uh, Insider uh, is actually really good. I like it a lot. It talks about, you know, reference actors for animation, you know, how it's a very important element of animation and how, you know, you should use reference and reference isn't cheating. And if anybody ever tells you that using reference for animation or any other part of art um, is cheating, they're wrong. <laughs> that's just a fact of the matter tracing art and claiming it as your own not purely for study is wrong but that's not referencing that's tracing there are differences um so there you go but this is a bunch of like really interesting bits in here but there is one quote that Spencer Wan pointed out that I that I heard, and I was like, oh, that's funny. Uh, storyboards aren't created for every frame, they're created for every third frame of animation is one of the most incorrect things I've ever heard about animation. And yeah, that's technically, you know, not true. Boards are boards aren't supposed to be, you know, every couple of frames of animation. Although in modern day animation, Boards are very detailed. There are a lot of frames and boards nowadays um, because studios want that clarity whenever they send their boards overseas to be animated. Um, that's just the fact of the matter. To prevent any confusion and to make sure the quality is what they want it to, they have to board a lot of frames. And whenever it, whenever it comes to like action, like action shows like the Avatar was, they probably they probably did board a lot of frames. Like they probably had to board a ton. But I also believe Avatar was still worked on mostly in studio. So I'm not 100 percent sure. I feel like most of the stuff was was in house. I'll have to look into that because it's been a long time since I've looked into like the chorus production stuff. Oh, speaking of which, I forgot I had this. Oh, oh, hold on. Let's maybe switch to a different cam, huh? Here we go. I've got the uh, Korra Book 2, Art of Korra. Uh, so you get a whole bunch of like, uh, uh, Korra stuff. I just remembered I had it. I just now knew that I was talking about I shut off two books today. Wow, look at me. I've got a own little I've got my own little library in my apartment. <laughs> hmm. 
I have like 10 books in my name. <laughs> so I, just, I only own like 10 books, tops. Moving on. We have the Etherton Brothers. If you don't follow, if you are an artist and you don't follow the Etherton Brothers, go follow the Etherton Bros. Um, they are constantly, constantly posting like really, really cool tutorials about like not how to draw something, but like the mentality and the thoughts you should keep in mind when drawing something, like how to draw gold, like all of its different forms and how to manage the curves and the shape and the specularity and the line art and uh, all this information, all this crazy stuff. And it, they, they, they put their information out in a way to where even if you don't like draw, say with line art, right? Like I like line art styles, but if you're more of a painter, this information still works with just like a painting style, you know, different styles can take advantage of this information in different ways because all their information is about getting across the idea of what you're animating and not, and what you're drawing and not looking like a certain style. They portray everything in their style, but once you read everything and you read all this information, that's when things start to change. That's when that context comes in differently. And sure, a lot of a lot of tutorials and a lot of books do that same thing. I just feel like the Etherton brothers are very, very good at it. Lorenzo specifically is very, very good at this. Um, but I started I figured I would talk about them because they did announce this like huge 225 tutorials on how to think when you write, which is, you know, writing for stories and animation. Um, tons, tons of information. So, 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 much stuff. So definitely go check it out. It's all organized right here at this link. I'll, of course, have all this information in the show notes. And Vert, you need to look at the tutorials. So here. Look at their tutorials, my guy. Let's see, what else? I guess I double opened the Demon Slayer thing. Oh, yes, okay. I found, so I found this guy today before stream. He popped up in my recommendeds. His name is Aaron Baker. And the thing is, I've been following Aaron on uh, Twitter for a long time. He's just somebody that I kind of followed out of the blue and I've just been keeping an eye on his work. Um, I didn't know at any point that he had a YouTube channel where he goes through and he does very detailed animation breakdowns of different things. Like, for example, this is an animation breakdown from the Popeye shorts. The, uh, the original like Popeye Sony test footage from like 2014 so long ago, which apparently the Popeye movie is back in production or there's talks about it being back in production. No one knows about, no one knows if it's ever going to come back, but he goes through and he does these extremely, extremely detailed breakdowns and bits of information. Um, it's just so, so good. It's such good information. Uh, and he does it all breaking down the different frames and different shots. And he manages to make it all last in 15 minutes drawing over everything and making sure that he just gets all the detail he can when talking about stuff like right here he's talking about the silhouette and the form like the different planes that are being played with he goes in forward and you see all the movement he talks about it he's just drawing over it to give better examples he sees like the overshoot he's, it's it's great it's great information it's great stuff to think about and it's the kind of studies that i want to start doing so that i can get better at animation um but yeah, this is phenomenal. This is such good information and his channel is so great. It is a shame he only has 241 subscribers. Um, so we definitely need to fix that. Let's get him up to 242. Let's go boys. 243 even. Let's go boys. I'll also be dropping this in my Discord, which segue join my discord if you haven't i'm pretty sure everybody that's here has joined the discord but for people who are listening on the pod or everything uh, or watching the vod link to the discord will be down below i really want to get it to where we can do more talks about animation more talks about uh, different shows discussing different topics in animation i want to be able to do all of that inside of the discord 
So if you have something you want to talk about animation related, join that discord, go to the animation talk show folder and just drop it into the discussion tab or share something in one of the art channels. And I'll talk to you about it at the very least. I'll comment on it. Just like put it there. Just put it there, please. You subbed his YouTube video. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's see that number change in real time. 241. 242. Oh! Oh! Pog! We did it. We did it, Twitch. We did it. Let's go. Let's go. Um. <laughs> I got somebody else a YouTube sub. Yes! <laughs> Oh my goodness. We changed the world. Let's go. But yeah, he definitely deserves it. He deserves way more. Like this information right here is absolutely invaluable. It's there's so much to it. There's so much to it. Um, I'm going to be sharing this around a lot more. And I recommend that you guys share it around as much as possible too, to anybody who wants to learn how to be better at like actual animation. Um, it's great, great stuff. It's so, 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 so good. Um, I think that's it. That's it for the news. That's it for all the announcement stuff, right? Goblin Week, important reference, tutorials, interesting story course. Story course. Oh, that's right. I took that off. Whoops. Yeah, that's it. Cool beans. That's all done. Uh, so now at the very end, of course, of every show, we're going over to your corner. If you got something you want to share, something you want me to talk about, drop it in the chat and I will take a look at it. Um, or if you got something you want to share, just tell it to me. Uh, but while you're doing that, I'm going to go over to the YouTube channel comments. Um, I have been pretty slow about making videos this uh, this year because I am getting back into the swing of like doing art, drawing, getting more used to that. So I haven't been making like a bunch of videos, uh, but I am going to start making videos again. Uh, again, uh, I teased it at the beginning of the stream. I have a video planned for later on this week. Um, I also want to do a Demon Slayer at a Central Park video. The Demon Slayer video will probably also come out sometime this week. I'm probably going to put off the Central Park video until closer to when Season 2 comes out, which I don't even know when that's going to be. But I, that trend will you know, start trending back up. And I'm going to be watching a bunch of other shows and getting back into it. Inner Deviant, hello, how are you doing today? Um, so, you know, all that stuff. I got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff to look into that way. Um, but, let's see. <laughs> hold on. Oh, hold on. Good in you. I'm doing very good, Inner Deviant. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the animation talk show today. Uh, a podcast where I talk about animation every week at sun on Sunday at 4 p.m. Central Time. Uh, talking about everything in the animation industry uh, surrounding it. Just, you know, uh, everything from new episodes of shows to movies, news, drama. Well, I try to avoid the drama unless I feel like we need to actually talk about it. But mostly just talking about new shows and stuff coming out. Uh, and trying to pay as much respect to the animation industry as possible. Um, Aaron... Uh, I feel like I need to sing, based on like the first line, I'm going to say this in an old man voice. Back in the day, after a couple of beers, my dad used to sit down in his favorite chair and he'd look to me and say, Aaron, give me another beer. <laughs> <laughs> I always bully people to talk about Mau Mau more. I do think Glitch Sex on Netflix needs more love in episodes. Yeah, Glitch Sex needs more love and Mau Mau is very good. I like both of those shows. I actually did watch more Mau Mau. I've only seen maybe like five or six episodes. I watched a chunk of it and then I was going to like, I'll wait till more episodes come out and I'll watch another chunk of it. And I never, I never watched the other chunk of it. Wow. Look at me. I made a mistake, <laughs> but yes, I need to watch more Mau Mau. Let's see. What were some comments I want to talk about? Let's see. Uh, I mean, nothing really crazy really came out as far as the comments. Well, there was this, and I, I see this comment a ton. Um, fun fact, this is actually the first time Splinter is in fact blood related to the turtles since it was Hamato Yoshi's blood plus the mutagen that made the turtles and the turtles they are and the mutants they are now. Since it was not ooze that was dropped on them, rather experiments from an Oni scientist. Um, 
this goes back to something that I mentioned in my Ninja Turtles video, which I'm really proud of and you should go watch. Um, but in my Ninja Turtles video, uh, I really focused on how strong the themes of like adoption were, like an adopted family and how uh, if you look even into the casting behind the characters, you know, it's not, it's not four white guys playing the turtles this time. You have two white guys and two black guys playing the turtles. So, and they're both, and the four turtles are all different types of turtles, like a raising back, a box, a razor back, a box turtle, uh, and I forget what Donnie and Leo are, but that's Raph and Mikey. Um, but you have these different types of turtles who are voiced by actors of different races. And then they are raised by a rat who's voiced by an actor of a different race. So all the way around, it really enforces the story of adoption. Um, but everybody keeps saying it's not adoption. But I keep getting this comment that it's not adoption because they have Hamato Yoshi's blood in them. And I'm like, yeah, but he didn't have anything to do with the birth. Like the original rat had nothing to do with the birth of the four turtles. <laughs> That's not how that worked. <laughs> <laughs> what you're describing is essentially a blood transfusion, which doesn't mean the old man that I got blood transfused from 17 years ago is now my dad. He just gave me blood because we were compatible. <laughs> I just don't, that's just not how that works. <laughs> I understand the, I understand the perspective of that side of the argument, but no, <laughs> this is not, this is not it. <laughs> it just, no, no. Also, that thumbnail is really stupid. <laughs> it's one of my dumbest thumbnails, but it's also one of my favorite. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love that thumbnail. Uh, I thought this was funny. Anyone like my profile pic? Only I responded. Yeah. <laughs> Noise. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Uh, let's see. Uh, also, yeah, this is another video I really liked. It was the three animators and me watched Wolf Walkers. Uh, I want to do, I have all the footage recorded for Klaus. Like we did the same thing where we watched the movie Klaus and we talked about it at the end. And we got into a lot of really interesting discussion on it. I've got all the footage for that. I just haven't edited it yet. <laughs> because these took a long time to edit because it's like 50 minutes of footage. It's like 50 minutes of recording. It's like my old videos when I didn't write my scripts and stuff first. Jesus. God, remember when I was unorganized? Looks at the chaos around me. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I like this and I can't wait to do the Klaus one. I can't wait to go back and hear what we said because I don't remember anything we talked about. I just know that it was fun to talk about it. And I want to do more of these going forward as well. Like more... More things were like together as a group, me and my friends watch a movie and with them all being professional animators, we can like really deep dive on the nitty gritty and the details of it. And that's just super fun. And I think it's good information. Now I'm just imagining Splinter and a turtle. Nope, Interdeviant. I know your name is Interdeviant. I'm gonna need you to keep those deviations on the inside. <laughs> Don't put those out to the public ether. I want none of it. I, <laughs> I've been on the internet long enough to know somebody has drawn that and I don't, 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 oh, this is something I forgot to talk about, um, connected. Uh, connected Sony Animations Connected, which came, which got announced last year, um, and was supposed to come out in 2020 because it got announced early last year. My, uh, I did a trailer breakdown on Connected, and it was like one of my first videos whenever I started the YouTube channel. It's so like probably April. I think I think maybe April. Hold on, let me just go to the video. Let's see, it came out. Uh, let's see. When did I publish this video? I published this video. 
You'd figure the date would be on here. Isn't it though? When did I post this? <laughs> when did I post this video? <laughs> Analytics, here we go. This should tell me. You guys are seeing some really weird behind the scenes right now. Video's gotten 393 views since it was published. When was it published? <laughs> March 6th, so March, April. Okay, so yeah, March, a month before I thought it was. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, I posted this video all that time ago. I was back in my old room with my old garbage lighting. God, wow, trash. Um, but um, it's now gotten picked up by netflix netflix bought it from sony and now it's been renamed to its original name the mitchells versus the machines i have not changed the thumbnail but i did rename the video to the mitchells versus the machines <laughs> why analytics baby <laughs> gotta stay on top of that title game baby <laughs> um but it got picked up by netflix so hopefully the movie will be coming out soon on Netflix. If I had to guess, I'm going to say March. I say March a lot. Actually, let's say April. Let's say April is when it will come out. I said a lot of March today, so we're going to say April. Yeah, April. All right. Is there anything else anybody wants to talk about this week? There's a copyright claim on this one. What? What did I do? I have to look into it. <sighs> <laughs> I'm just complaining about copyright claims now on my stream. <laughs> I just I just start streaming, start recording the podcast, and just start talking about. Oh my god! Uh, what was the name of the Netflix one? Uh, when it goes to Netflix, Deviant is going to be called The Mitchells versus the Machines. Uh, that was the original name on, of it before Sony renamed it to Connected. Um, so there you go. I don't know when it's coming out. They haven't announced a release date to my knowledge. I've been keeping up with this project for a while. Uh, I just know that it's on its way. Eventually. <laughs> so it'll be coming out then. But with all that said, uh, I think we're going to put a pin in the animation talk show for this week. Uh, everybody, thank you all for coming by. It's been a great time. Had a lot of fun. Uh, talked about Oh, hold on. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold on. No, we're stopping this. What's this, Aaron? I saw Cody Hansel at a grocery store yesterday. I told him how cool it was to meet him in person, but I didn't want to be a douche and bother him and ask him for photos or anything. He said, oh, like you're doing now? I was taken aback and all I could say was, huh? But he kept cutting me off and saying, huh, huh, huh? He closing his hands and <laughs> shut in front of my face. I walked away, continued my shopping. I heard him chuckle as I walked off. <laughs> That's like the most out of character thing for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ter no, I'm terrified of confrontation, especially in public spaces. So there's no way I would have the cockiness to do this. <laughs> I would do it as a joke on stream. Huh? 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 I would do <laughs> see I'd do it here. But not out in public. Not out in like the middle of a Walmart. No. Can't believe you shun people in supermarkets though. Canceled. It's the supermarket. I'm going in. I'm shopping. I'm getting out. Don't get sassy with me. I'll get sassy with you. <laughs> Exposed. Oh my god. I'm getting bullied now. What's happening? <sighs> okay. Let me get this stuff out of the way. Everybody, thank you again for listening to the Animation Talk Show. Follow me on all the social media links and everything will be in the description down below. New videos coming out on YouTube all the time. These VODs come out every week on YouTube, so you can watch them there if you miss them. Or again, listen to the podcast version. Um, I'm trying to minimize so much of the like visual elements of the show uh, just because I don't want the podcast listeners to feel like they're missing out so much. That being said, if you're listening to it on a podcast, come listen, come watch it on YouTube because I want that watch time more than I want your listening time on the podcast. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that they're just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be it for this week. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording here. Goodbye.